everybody welcome to hospitalista channel and a new course on our channel master iv fluid course as part of your residency or practicing in a hospital dealing with iv fluid ordering iv fluid adjusting iv fluid discontinuing iv fluid as an everyday skill that you need so it's a very essential skill that you need to master and know because you have you will be dealing with it on everyday basis so how we're going to approach this course basically there is few questions we need to answer every time we think of iv fluid and we're going to tackle these questions by one by one and that way we will cover all this topic in a very practical way and to have a solid knowledge of iv fluid also bear with me because i'm still trying to keep the videos short and i'll try my best so you may not find your answer in one video you need to watch the whole course to get all the knowledge hopefully you're looking for okay whenever you think of ordering iv fluid there is few questions you need to answer the first and i feel it's the very most important questions is what you trying what we trying to achieve with this iv fluid which means why why we ordering iv fluid so that's the first one after that is what type you decide your goal of ordering iv fluid then now what type of iv fluid now you decided the type the next question is how much you want to give a liter two three four five and the question that followed that immediately is how fast over how long you need to give the amount of fluid and the last question is when and how we're going to discontinue iv fluid so these are the main questions if you are able to answer these question every time you're ordering iv fluid then you are a master in iv fluid okay the let's start with the very important questions every time we thinking to order iv fluid we ask ourselves why we ordering iv fluid what we trying to achieve and there is three main goals only three main goals actually two basic ones and the third one you can consider it under also one of these two but i'll put it on a separate um point here so whenever you're ordering iv fluid you either replacing physiologic losses and here we call it maintenance iv fluid because we're just replacing iv flu uh, physiologic body losses and when i say physiologic body losses on every day healthy people lose water and electrolytes with urine stool breathing sweating and it's estimated roughly to be around 1500 to 1600 cc so these are physiologic losses so somebody who cannot replace them on his own or her own like normally we just drink water and eat and we are able to maintain that balance and our kidneys functioning and is great in maintaining that balance but let's say somebody who is npo fasting for a reason or another in the hospital cannot eat cannot drink then that's when you start thinking about maintenance iv fluid which means you're replacing you're trying to replace the physiologic losses uh, that can happen to anybody okay so let's put it aside that's maintenance iv fluid you're replacing the physiologic fluid losses the next thing is maybe this patient is having extra losses on top of his physiologic losses somebody with diarrhea somebody with vomiting uh, somebody who's third spacing from severe inflammatory process like acute pancreatitis somebody in septic shock somebody losing a lot of fluid with urine like dka or non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia and etc all these indications here you are losing way more than the physiologic losses and here you try to replace all of that try to replenish that lost volume here we call it volume replacement or volume resuscitation and this is the second indication for iv fluid replacing 
abnormal fluid losses fluid losses you're trying to restore the intravascular volume so that's what we call a volume repletion resuscitation or replacements now you may wonder before we go into the third type with maintenance IV fluid you try to replace the your estimated electrolytes and your estimated water that we're losing in physiologic classes but with volume resuscitation we are here trying to restore the intravascular volume so you can only guess that the volume replacement here has to be faster than maintenance IV fluid replacement and also you need to give a kind of fluid that will stay in the intravascular volume or let me say the extracellular space so you do not want to give a fluid that as soon as you give it it goes intracellularly so keep that in mind our goal is to replenish the intravascular volume as soon as possible with volume resuscitation so it's going to be faster and you have to pick a fluid that remain in the extracellular space mainly in the intravascular space as you know we have intracellular and extracellular and the extracellular we have intravascular and interstitial and i'll stop i don't want to go too much in physiology now the third type which you may consider it could be could belong to one of these is electrolyte replacement somebody with severe hypokalemia somebody with hypernatremia hyponatremia or somebody with let's say severe metabolic acidosis you're trying to treat uh, like a therapeutic iv fluid like giving sodium bicarb in the iv fluid so these are the three main indications we're not gonna here talk about tpn or ppn that will leave it to when we come to talk about nutrition um, in the hospital and in an ICU course also and nutrition in critically ill patients okay so to wrap this up the answer for the first questions is what we're trying to achieve with giving IV fluid or why either maintenance or volume resuscitation or replacement or therapeutic repleting electrolytes or treating metabolic acidosis so these are the three main categories because based on what you're trying to achieve we come to the next questions is what type of iv fluid and i'll talk about this in our next video thanks for listening